Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Maryland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. You might notice first of all that I might sound a little bit different. I got a new microphone. It's an Anwa USB condenser mic. I got myself a pop shield and a shock mount and uh, a lovely big uh, desk mounted thingy for it. One of the boom stands. So uh, I have a big mic right up in my face and this is going to take quite a bit of getting used to. Uh, I'm not sure what... I'm hoping the quality is going to be better for sure but um, I, I'm... It's probably going to take me a little bit of time to get used to how to work this thing. Uh, I'm not used to having a mic here that I have to be considerate of at all times and keep my head in the right place. But anyway, we're back in From the Depths and uh, I've been looking at the coastal defense things again. And I've been... Uh, Ruger actually sent me something. It's like two weeks ago he actually sent it to me and I haven't got around to shooting a video with it yet. But he sent me a, a, missile, a swarm missile defense system for the coastal defense. We're going to have a look at that. And I have two other examples to show you as well. But the first things I had to do with this was, first up, increase our ammo uh, production capacity. I added a full of, like, what, another 24 ammo pro produ producer thingies. And, uh, yeah, that has helped a little in <laughs> coming coming up with the ammo that you need to, to f get missiles firing. They really need a lot of ammo. Uh, I also added more ammo barrels at the bottom here, just to have a bigger buffer storage, and uh, it sort of, again, helps the missiles. Uh, I am going to update the Steam Workshop link for this guy at least, anyway, and uh, make sure that the updated platform's up there for you. Now, let's move on to the first example. This is my first attempt at a very small, cheap uh, cruise missile defense platform because uh, some people are concerned again that the a lot of this coastal defense stuff is very expensive And I won't lie it is but this guy is extremely cheap. He has all the guidance he needs and I just realized I missed a painted block um, On the sides here But yeah oh, That's on the main chassis. That's why haha -ha. Look at that. Anyway, the yeah, this uh, is a uh, Come back. Good lord. This is a very cheap little missile defense platform. Uh, where's the missiles, you say? They're inside! Hurrah! Uh, it's got a spinny up bit at the top. I've uh, got the top laser guidance mounted on a spin block, and this is actually a separate missile controller to the other one. There's a really interesting thing you can do with uh, missiles, and you can set them to... Oh, and I realize that top one's not set right. You can set these to target four different vehicles or uh, like different missile controllers on... Oh, these ones are set right, that's why it was working. Um, on different vehicles in your fleet. So these ones all are configured to set to target for my vehicle's missiles only. And whenever you actually go into the missile itself... Let's find the laser designated receiver. There's this slider here that allows you to change which... Uh, missile target or type or laser target or type that these missiles will aim for. So we have it aim at our lasers only. This will only aim at la um, laser designation from the laser targeter connected to this weapon system. Only the ones that the missiles are attached to. The second one is ones on our vehicle, so it'll aim at any laser designator on our vehicle. And we also have the third option, which allows to aim at any of our team's lasers. Now, the laser designators have to be set up with these corresponding ones as well. Uh, if you have it set to all aim at our team's lasers only, and it's uh, the laser designator set to target for your vehicle, it, these won't work. Uh, they have to be coincide with the setup on the other missile controller. But this is set to aim at our vehicle's lasers only, and that allows us to have two separate weapon controllers. And the reason I have this on the spin block on quite a long arm here is... Uh, it lets us mount it a little bit lower under the tree, and let's get a sea viper on the go, and this should, hopefully, oh, uh, oops, that's a slight problem, <laughs> it doesn't open up fast enough, and we always get that first missile going the wrong way, but, uh, okay, are you targeting, oh man, 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 screwed this up again, look at that, I really should test this guy, this was like my first attempt at it, and uh, now it's working, there we go, uh, and it, it honestly isn't great. It's very cheap, but it's not very effective. Oh, there we go. It's going down again. Blasted the crap out of that little sea viper. Uh, actually, to alleviate the problem with them shooting too early, let's give it a... That's not what I want. That's not what I want either. Where's the missile controller? Come here, Mr. Missile Controller. There we are. Uh, if you put a, like a, a one half second, one and a half second firing delay on this, it should hold the missiles in place long enough 
or if we get another well, a sea otter in this time. Whenever this decides to go up, it should have long enough. Okay, there we go, that's better at least. Gives it a little bit of push in the right direction. But yeah, that works okay now. But yeah, it's a very, very cheap little platform. These missiles are quite powerful. Um, they're like, I think, uh, triple or quad frags. Oh, they're explosive. Okay, that needs to be changed. Uh, I was playing with these last whenever, uh, before the armor nerf hit, and explosive warheads at the minute are really, really quite pants. Uh, frags are much, much more powerful. Um, I'm hoping that's going to change in the future, because at the minute there's really no incentive to use them. But uh, I'm gonna ch I'll change these up for frags. Uh, it would make them much, much better. But yeah, that's the first example. It's super, super cheap. There's very little on the inside here. These actually have ejectors. Uh, they don't really need ejectors. These also have one turns, and I don't think they need one turns either. Um, so the missiles need to be f you know, tweaked and fiddled with a little bit. More or less, this was sort of a proof of concept design. It's not. I'm not gonna put this up anywhere because honestly, it's a bit crap. But it is an example of how to use these uh, missile or laser targeters to do something a little bit different. Anyway, I'm going to cut here and go and get the next platform on the go so that we can have a look at it. Okay, so this is a slightly more refined version of the previous missile rack, only you'll notice it hasn't got any of its own designation. It's much the same configuration, these are, I think are seven block missiles, but it's a better missile than the previous example. It's using a, th uh, a variable thruster with a a low thrust setting and lots of fuel so these have a really quite a good range it's got nearly two kilometer range uh, it's got a TPG a bunch of frag warheads so these are quite powerful and it's got a laser designated receiver but it's aiming at our team's lasers only now that means that we need to get our laser designation from somewhere else and I have a little little fella up there that does just that for us this is a little laser copter and all it has is a daddy heli spinner a weapon uh, mount and laser designation on it and I have all of these configured to target for my team's missiles now this fella floats about what 460 468 altitude uh, it sits up here nicely no defenses extremely cheap though so if you would if you're doing something like this and you were using these tiny tiny little laser drones I would recommend having a couple of them just to have you know a little bit of redundancy in case they get blown up in the middle of the battle They'll only take about one shot, obviously. There's nothing to them. There's no armor, there's nothing. But they're kept this way, so they're kind of disposable. So if you have a sort of redundancy swarm, they work really quite well. So, um, yeah, this missile rack, uh, they don't use one turns, as you do not actually need one turns for laser designation. You don't even have to shoot them in the same direction. They will automatically target to the right thing. Now, there's a little bit of a spoiler. The archer pod, and we'll see that in a little minute don't need you on, we want the laser guided missiles on, we'll have a laser copter, and let's get another little laser copter in, we can see him taking off, here he is, go on, off you go, here you go buddy, thank you, and he will keep an eye on the enemy for us, now let's uh, spawn something in just as an example, we'll go with something small, and the missiles are all away, off we go, and you see those guys there are targeting for us, Nice. And the missiles are flying away towards the target. Like I say, these are only like a 600 setting uh, on the speed, so they're, they're really quite slow. They're quite long missiles, but they have a really reasonable range. Um, and f with five warheads on board, they can really do quite a lot of damage. Uh, sadly, with them being such a large missile... Oh, good lord. Being such a large missile, obviously the ammo cost is really high, the reload speed is really high, and in terms of the whole coastal defense system, they're probably better for softening up the enemy a little bit before they get there. Um, with the larger, you know, longer range cannons and stuff, it's just a, um, a little bit of added DPS if things get a little bit close. But they are quite effective. Like I said, the only problem being they have massive ammo cost. And that's the, the pure reason that I had to upgrade this platform over here. But that is my laser designation attempt. Ruger has built a lovely little Lua controlled example. And uh, we're going to have got a wee look at that now. So I will be right back. And in typical Ruger style, this beautiful, aesthetically pleasing example is the Archer. Um, it's a coastal defense swarm system. It doesn't use Lua for targeting, but it does use Lua to get this awesome 
sort of tilt on the, the turret, and I believe the code was made by Kaelin Loki on the forums by request, which was really cool of him. Um, I'll, I, if I have a link, I'll put a link to the thread in the down there. But uh, yeah, this thing is pretty awesome. It has a wonderful arc whenever it's firing. It uses a, a sort of a bit of a different configuration for the shells. It uses APNs to uh, give it a, a nice sort of a steady arch towards the the target. And yeah, these things are absolutely beautiful whenever whenever they're firing. I'll show them off now in a wee second. Uh, there's really not very much in this little, this big box down here. These ammo barrels, actually, if they get hit, they don't take out the things in the center, which I was quite happy with. Um, it does use sort of a bit of an unusual method for doing this. It's got a second turret here. This turret is completely necessary. If you take this out, the thing upstairs doesn't work right. But that's down to the, the way the Lua code works. Don't ask me how it works. I haven't a baldy clue. I don't code Lua. But with this sort of standard 45, is it 45, 30, 30 degree angle, uh, it means it's got like a a straight path to go from whenever it's coming out of the uh, out of the uh, rack and it's got because of the APNs it has to sort of coast back down again so it has a lovely long arc whenever it's firing and they're like double frag missiles but without further ado let's get something in to shoot at with a Calamar so we can enjoy this thing firing a little bit more you see the, the this uh, this bit on the side here is more or less um, it's only there for show. It's uh, the actual turret is on a tiny little uh, turret somewhere stuck in the middle here. Yeah, there it is, connected with light blocks. But it's a very interesting way to get that sort of lovely aesthetic. But let's just look at the way that these these missiles come down. They've got this beautiful slow arc, and you'll see why it's called the Archer. Look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? And these are fairly long range. I think they're about um, like 1,500 meters or so, which is pretty good. And because they have an APN on them, if if they're coming to the target and they're running out just as they get close, I think like they are there, they can still have a little bit of targeting available. They can sort of curve their trajectory upwards to, to get a little bit more distance out of them. So they're a very, very effective little missile and look absolutely stunning. Oh, isn't that pretty? But yeah, that's uh, that's the coastal defense examples. Now Ruger's one, I'm going to get him uh, poke him into putting that one up on the workshop for you, because it is a really beautiful turret and it's actually very very effective. Um, the second example I showed you, I'll probably not bother putting it up because with the little radar copter, it being a structure and the radar copter being a vehicle, you can't put them in the same fleet, which means that you can't use a sub-vehicle spawner, which is really irritating. But um, they're kind of awkward to do, a little bit of more micromanagement, something like putting the like the spin block turrets on top of the other turrets and stuff like that. And it's a lot of micromanaging to keep everything working effectively. But this guy here is just a set it and forget it. Very, very good little system. And it does chew up a lot of ammo, bear that in mind. But it's... Very effective for what it does. Now, as usual, I am going to do a little montage uh, covering all uh, all these vehicles. I'll probably put uh, a couple of my own coastal, coastal defense cannons in there as well, just to show it off, uh, just to help out in the battle, make it a little bit more interesting. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a couple more missile examples on coastal defense, and these are all pretty cheap examples. Actually, how much is the the Archer Pod? I don't believe it's too expensive. Okay, now this one's a lot more expensive than the other ones. But hey, you pay for cool, right? Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.